Here we're going to be following the president on his way to Dallas and the stop today is in Houston after he spent a big part of the 21st in San Antonio. We kind of told you about he spent most of his day in, in uh, San Antonio and at 3.35 p.m. on the 21st, he, de he departed for Houston. So he left San Antonio at 3.35 p.m. on the 21st, heading for Houston. Now the main reason that he was going to Houston uh, wasn't so much uh, ex inspecting any military installations. That was, really wasn't why he went to Houston. He actually went to Houston to speak at a dinner in honor of Congressman Albert Thomas. So at 3.35 p.m. You're going to be able to write? Yeah. At 3.35 p.m., the presidential party departed for Houston from, it, from San Antonio, and the president was scheduled to give a speech at a banquet that night in honor of Congressman Albert Thomas. Now, if I say Congressman Albert Thomas, just so we're clear, what position does he hold? No. no. House of Representatives. Okay. Yes, if you're a member, if you're a congressman, you're a member of the House. If you're a senator, you are a senator. Okay. They both serve in the Senate. A senator and a member and a representative both serve in the House of Congress. They're in the, they're in the, they're in Congress. But if you're a congressman, you are a member of the House. So it took 45 minutes for the president to fly approximately. He landed in Houston at 5 p.m. that evening. And like in every other city, they were met by a large crowd. They got into a motorcade, which was a parade route. And they went through Houston, where they arrived at the Rice Hotel. So... After a 45-minute flight, the presidential party landed in Houston at 5 p.m. They were met by a large crowd. They got into the motorcade. And at 5.45 p.m., the presidential party arrived at the Rice Hotel in Houston. So they did about a 45-minute motorcade route through Houston. Rice Hotel, yep. <coughs> well, when they got to the hotel, the League of United Latin American Citizens, when they got to the hotel in Houston, the League of United Latin American Citizens, League of United Latin American Citizens, better known as LULAC, they were having a meeting at the hotel where the president was staying, just by coincidence. So when the presidential party arrived at the Rice Hotel in Houston, it was found out that the League of United Latin American Citizens, or LULAC for short, were also having a meeting at the hotel where the president was staying, just by coincidence. <laughs> LULAC is on your ID sheet. It stands for League of United Latin American Citizens an organization. They just happened to be staying at the same hotel the president was staying at. So what do you think that LULAC wanted the president to do? Make a little appearance. They, think they thought maybe he would do that. So they requested that President Kennedy make an appearance at their event. Unscheduled, just happened to be occurring at the time, and they were informed by the Secret Service that the president would agree to do that. Okay, so when the president arrives at the hotel, the Rice Hotel in Houston, the League of United Latin American <coughs> Citizens, or LULAC, were also staying there, and their organization requested that President Kennedy just make a short appearance at their event, and the Secret Service talked to the president, he agreed to do so. Okay, now, his appearance was scheduled to be brief.
And they were pleased with that. If they were even going to get a glimpse of the president, they'd be fired up. But they actually got much more than what they thought they were going to get. They actually thought the president was just going to kind of peer into the door of the ballroom and wave, and everybody could say, oh, there's the president. That's kind of what they expected, and they were okay with that. But they actually got much more than that, much more than they bargained for. The president, Mrs. Kennedy, actually came into the ballroom and walked to the front of the stage. They weren't expecting that. They were thrilled to death because they thought he just might make an appearance. He might just show up and wave. That was good enough for them. But actually, instead of that little glimpse or wave, the president, Mrs. Kennedy, came into the ballroom where, the, where Lulac was meeting and actually walked to the stage in front of the crowd. Well, Jackie, who was the president's greatest ally, I mean, she was really quite uh, a public relations dream for any politician. She approached the stage, and there was a musician up there by the name of Fernando Herrera, who happened to be up there entertaining with this group, the crowd. So Jackie approached the stage when they walked in, and she greeted a musician by the name of Fernando Herrera. and He was playing for that event that night. He just happened to be up on the stage plane. And of course you can imagine he was thrilled to death to meet the first lady. He was so thrilled to death he was later, later quoted as saying the following which you don't need to write down just need to listen to. So Jackie approached the stage she, and greeted a musician by the name of Fernando Herrera. He was playing the event that night. He was thrilled to death to meet Mrs. Kennedy. And he was later quoted as saying, quote, I was standing right behind both of them. I heard him say, I'm having a wonderful time. Her response, it is so nice to be away from the political arena. So it was, it was nothing planned. It was just something they did that had nothing to do with politics. Well, the president spoke for a few minutes. And this is kind of what he said didn't say too much. He spoke a while, and then he kind of ended his speech. He said, I am very proud to come to this meeting. So am I glad to be here today. In order that my words would even be clear stated, I'm going to ask my wife to say a few words to you also. What's he mean by that? I'll read it again. He said, I am very proud to come to this meeting. So am I glad to be here today. And in order that my words to be even clearer, I'm going to ask for my wife to say a few words to you also. Think about the event. She's going to speak in language. What language? Spanish. What group we have here? Spanish. And what do they speak? Spanish. Spanish. So he doesn't know Spanish. And so he's going to turn his greatest asset over to the crowd. And she spoke to the crowd in Spanish and was incredibly well received. Incredibly well received. And they stayed for 17 minutes, which in, that, in a case like that would be very unusual. Instead of just giving them a glance in the, you know, into the door and waving, they came to the front. The president spoke. He turned it over to his wife, and she spoke to the crowd in Spanish. They actually spent 17 minutes there, which was just a, an incredible time to spend off cuff. You watched 13 Days... And Kenneth O'Donnell had the president scheduled down just to a T every single day. And he took 17 minutes off the schedule, so to speak, to spend time with these people. And when he was done, he just went back to his regular schedule. What's he plan on doing again that evening? What's his plan? What's that? He's going to speak in honor of, of Congressman Albert Thomas. See, what's also coming up in 1964 besides the presidential election? Senate elections are coming up. House elections are coming up. So they're all kind of campaigning for each other. So you don't think it'll do Albert Thomas some good if the President of the United States speaks in his behalf at a dinner? That's what it was planned to do. Now, what's in Houston that's so important to us, our country, even today? What did he say? The Texans? No. They're getting better, though. Um, what's in Houston? Oh, that's NASA. NASA, the head of our space program. And remember, Kennedy's promise was we were going to land a man on the moon and bring him back safely by the end of the decade, okay? So NASA's a big deal in these days. So at 9.30 p.m., Kennedy steps up and gives his speech in Houston. 
And he praises two things. He praises two things in his speech. Obviously, one of them is going to be what? Who's he going to be praising? Albert Thomas. He's going to spend a lot of his speech praising the great work of Albert Thomas. But what else is he going to, is he going to praise that city's role in? Space program. Okay. So at 9.30 p.m., President Kennedy gave a speech in Houston. He praised both Congressman Thomas for his hard work for the state of Texas, and he also really praised the city, Houston's role in the space program. Now, again, the president had a great ability to clean things up when he screwed up. And in this speech, he made a comment that, you'll have to see it, I'll show it to you on video, and it's, it's not belly laughing, but if you catch it, it's kind of funny. He was taking a lot of heat for spending a lot of the taxpayers' money on what? The space, the space program, okay? <laughs> and so he's given this speech, and to keep in the back of your mind, he's getting a little criticism. A lot of people think this is a waste of taxpayer money to go to the moon. Okay, so here, just listen to this and see what he said. So this is part of his speech. He says, next month, when the United States of America fires the largest booster in the history of the world into space for the first time, giving us the lead, because who, who are we in a race with? Okay, giving us the lead, fires the largest payroll, I mean payload, he was supposed to say payload, and he said payroll. Okay, and he just screwed up. So he says, fires the largest payroll, I mean payload, into space, giving us the lead, and he realizes that he screwed up. And he realizes that he stops and he says, well, it will be the largest payroll too. And who should know better than Houston? We put a little of it right in here, haven't we? So he screws up because he just kind of says something that's going to be criticized because the money they're spending by saying payroll instead of payload. And he totally redeems himself with a little bit of Kennedy wit and humor. So again, he said, I'll read the whole thing. He says, next month when the United States of America fires the largest booster in the history of the world into space for the first time, giving us the lead, fires the largest payroll, I mean payload, into space, giving us the lead, and he pauses, he says, it will be the largest payroll too, and he kind of smiles, he just has that great smile, and he says, and who should know better than Houston? We put a little of it right here as well. Then he says, but in any case, the United States next month will have a leadership in space which it wouldn't have had without Albert Thomas. So he makes a point to hit Albert Thomas for his work. But the fact was a lot of people got the kick out of it because he really kind of screwed, screwed himself over by making that comment and cleared it up. Well, after that speech for Albert Thomas, he left, Fort, excuse me, left Houston and they flew to Fort Worth late that night and they arrived at Fort Worth, Texas at 11.05 p.m. So they get in very late into Fort Worth. And what's his schedule the next day in Fort Worth? Do we remember that? Right. He's going to give a speech, a breakfast speech at the Chamber of Commerce in front of 2,500 guests approximately before he goes to Dallas. Okay? So that will take us to Fort Worth, Texas. So the president has made his yeah. appearance in Houston, given his speeches, all that, and now he's in Fort Worth, Texas. Well, they get in. They get it. They fly in at 11:05. So now we'll talk about Fort Worth. Okay. Well, when the president landed in Fort Worth that late in the evening, he was met by thousands of people at the airport. A lot of people came to see him get off the plane at the airport that late at night, and it included several boys from a Catholic elementary school. So as the president landed at 1105, he was actually greeted, he and, his, he and Mrs. Kennedy, by a large group of people at the airport. Thousands of people, including several boys from a Catholic elementary school. Well, one of those boys from the Catholic elementary school was eight was an eight-year-old third grader by the name of Bob Machos. Bob Machos was one of the boys from the Catholic elementary school. He was eight years old. He was a third grader. Bob Machos. 
And as the President and Mrs. Kennedy got off the plane and shook hands with people that were waiting, eight-year-old third grader Bob Mach Machos happened to be greeted by both of them. They both stuck their hand out and shook that little guy's hand. I see Ashton back there. Let's see, he's eight years old. He's a third grader. Must be kind of smart. Okay. Eight-year-old third grader Bob Machos was greeted by both Mrs. Kennedy and the President. And Mrs. Kennedy actually, instead of shaking his hands, she kissed him on the forehead, and the president patted him on the head. Now, do you think you would remember that the rest of your life concerning the events that happened? Mm -hmm. So, Bob Machos, an eight-year-old third grader, who happened to be in the right place at the right time when the president and Mrs. Kennedy got off the plane, was greeted by Mrs. Kennedy, who kissed him on the forehead, and the president patted him on the head. So they leave the airport, and they're staying at the Hotel Texas. They're staying at the Hotel Texas in Fort Worth. That's where they're going to spend the night. So the president, presidential party left the airport and arrived at the Hotel Texas, where they would be spending the night. That ends November 21st, 1963, in our lecture. Yeah? Didn't they check into a hotel in... And they had just been in? No, they no, they just been going. Well, this all this was the twenty first. So then, why did they go to that hotel for the Latin American? They just went there. They didn't stay overnight. They just they might have checked into a hotel, but they didn't stay overnight. They just went somewhere and tell a speech. They didn't stay overnight. Yeah. You see what I mean? They didn't stay overnight. But the president had some. I get what you're saying. The president had to have somewhere to go, but he didn't stay overnight. So what did the? So that so all this stuff I'm telling you about. The trip to San Antonio and to Houston all happened on the 21st. They left the morning of the 21st. So they've been moving. They went to San Antonio, did their thing. They went to Houston, did their thing. Now they've flown in late to Fort Worth on the night of the 21st, and they're now going to bed. So now we're going to start talking about the morning of November 22nd, which is still under the same subtopic of Fort Worth, Texas, but we're talking about a new day here. Okay? And Kennedy got up very early the morning of the 22nd. Got up very early. <clears throat> And he read the morning newspaper. Not the newspaper. That's kind of what we did in those days. You got up early, had a cup of coffee, a couple pieces of toast, and read the newspaper. Well, guess what the headlines was on the front page of the Fort Worth newspaper that morning? Not that the president's going to speak. Big letters, Yarborough snubs LBJ. That's the big headline of the paper that morning. Yarborough snubs LBJ. Now there's kind of a story behind that. And Yarborough was mad because he obviously left Washington, D.C. to get down to Texas, right, for this thing. And just before he left to join the president on Air Force One, because he went with the president from Washington, he learned that he was denied a seat at the head table at that fundraiser in Houston, or excuse me, in Austin. Remember the president was going to go speak at a hundred dollar a plate dinner in Austin? They didn't give Yarborough a seat at the front table and he was mad about it. Okay, he was mad. So just before Senator Yarborough left Washington DC to join the president on Air Force One, he had learned from his aides that he was not given a seat at the head table during that dinner at Houston that was scheduled for the night of the 22nd. He was not happy. Well, after that speech, Governor Conley was scheduled to have a reception for the people afterwards, and guess what? He didn't get invited to that either. So he didn't get to sit at the head table during the president's speech in Austin, and then Governor Connolly did not invite him to his reception that was scheduled to take place after the president's speech that night. So, what does it mean that Yarborough snubs LBJ? What do you think Yarborough's going to do to snub LBJ? He's pissed off about these two instances, right? What's he going to do to snub him? We want to take a guess at that. What can he do to snub him? He's going to refuse to ride in the same car with him in the motorcade in Dallas. And does Kennedy want those two together? Yeah, he does. 
That's the reason he's there. That's just the headlines he wanted to avoid. And when Kennedy found out that the way that Yarborough was going to snub LBJ was not riding the same car in the motorcade, he told his people, will you tell him he can walk? Well, that isn't what he really said. He said, you get a hold of Yarborough and you tell him to get his ass in that car with Lincoln. That's what he said. He was mad that morning, right off the bat. Because he was not going to have that. That was the reason he went there, was to try to get these people to get along. And here the front page of the Fort Worth newspaper says, Yarborough snubs LBJ. And he's mad. And he probably has a right to be mad. The president doesn't care. He doesn't want any conflict. So he makes sure that the word gets to Yarborough that you will ride with Lyndon Johnson in this motorcade, which he did. Okay? Now, we'll tell you about the day. At 7 o'clock that morning, Lyndon Johnson visited with his personal secretary, Evelyn Lincoln. And here's Evelyn Lincoln right here. Okay? He visited with his personal secretary, Evelyn Lincoln, at 7 a.m. that morning. JFK, JFK yep. And he visited with her, you know, to kind of explain it. I'm sure they had some conversations about how the day was going to go. And Mrs. Lincoln asked the president if he would be willing to meet with a few of her friends in the hallway later that morning. So at 7 o'clock, the president meets with, meets with his personal secretary, Evelyn Lincoln. They have a discussion. And then Mrs. Lincoln asked the president if he would be able to meet with a few of her friends in the hallway later that morning, the hallway of the hotel. And he agreed. He said he would. So at 7 a.m., President Kennedy visited with his personal secretary, Evelyn Lincoln, and the president agreed to meet with a few of Mrs. Lincoln's friends in the hallway later that morning. And according to Mrs. Lincoln, at that point, the president was in a very happy mood, was in a very good mood when he was visiting with her that morning. That was her later recollection of that moment. So according